Hi everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to get uh, started here. And uh, glad that most of us are back. And uh, I know it's been a season, a holiday season, Christmas, New Year's. Uh, the flu's going around, COVID. Seems like everyone's getting uh, over it. It's the most of us. Uh, please remember this Sunday, 5.30 p.m. at Estes Elementary, we're going to have Evangelist Darren Sparks, good young man, and uh, we're excited to have him. And uh, I do want to let you know, um, we have a victory report, and uh, a few months ago I had mentioned that we would be starting, uh, some of the young people here in Miranda would be starting a P7 club. The P7 club, the 7 stands for like 7 initiatives that they, they do. Uh, in school, and I don't have all of those by memory, uh, but one of them is doing community outreach, doing all those kind of stuff, and it's a Project 7. So Jonathan, my son, our second oldest, had asked for me to write a letter to uh, a teacher, and of course I did, and then I forgot, and holiday season came, he forgot, and anyhow, she came to him this week and said, um, she had some reservations, not because she wasn't for it, she's a Christian, but she had some reservations because there's another Bible club in, the, in Miranda High School. Uh, long story short, uh, she asked, you know, how would this be? Don't want it to be counterproductive and speeding up to this week. We forgot, but maybe it was the Lord. Uh, and uh, she came to Jonathan and said, you know, what about this, this club? And, of course, he said, yeah, we, we forgot or you know, things got busy. And she goes, well, I want to sign off on it anyhow. So we're excited about that. And so uh, they met. To, that was yesterday, I believe, the day before. We met today. Solomon, Jonathan, Brianna, and uh, Evelyn had met as well. And they have to have a secretary, a finance person. And they have to have a president, vice president. So they got all that situated. And, of course, Solomon's not going to be. He's going to be a part of the club. And he's a senior. So they, they involved Ruby into this as well. Um, all those details to say that thank you for your prayers. We're glad that God has opened that up. What will be happening on a weekly basis, they'll be teaching the Bible. Our young people will be teaching the Bible. There'll be other opportunities where they'll uh, let the school know that they're going to do like a community event, maybe clean the school, do those kind of initiatives. And uh, So we're really excited about that. So we'll have the opportunity, the gospel to be extended in Miranda High School, which is about 10, 15 minutes from here. And uh, they do have to get that signed off by the district board of Miranda Unified School District, which we don't see a problem. Everything has been uh, checked by lawyers and all the, the things that need to be. And so keep those, those young people in your prayers. Uh, I'm believing that God is going to do something marvelous with that. Amen? Amen. So we're excited about that. Excited about this Sunday, 530. Uh, also Saturday, for those that are able to, we're going to meet at Estes at 10 a.m. We'll be done by 11. We're going to uh, have a, a minute of prayer. We'll hand out our door hangers, and then we will go to the neighborhood of San Lucas, which is literally about a minute, two minutes away from the school, and we will begin to. All right, the music people are trying to shut me up. My goodness, man, I got the pulpit. <laughs> you can't shut this man of God up. <laughs> um, where was it? So we'll do some outreach now. What I do like about door hangers is you don't have to talk to anybody. I know that sounds weird, uh, but uh, as I mentioned before, if you're an introvert, it's perfect. If you're an extrovert, when you, someone opens the door, we're all excited and I'm ready to you know, baptize them and all that good stuff. But uh, uh, just to let you know how we do it is we have three people to a street. We have one on the left going to those houses and then one on the other side of the street going to the houses there. And then we have somebody that just drives with them. Part of it is safety. And, and part of it is so things can be very expedient. We don't want to take everyone's time. And they just kind of follow the car or they can meet them at the end of that, that street. And then those two individuals that are doing the door hangers pop into that vehicle. And then they go to the next uh, street. So we kind of have a little strategy there uh, that we learned. We were able to do 500 door hangers uh, when we did the carnival a couple of years ago uh, within an hour, maybe a little hour and a half just because... You know, we're kind of overlapping. There was a lot of help. We only had 20. So if you're able to come, thank you. If not, no pressure. Uh, afterwards, you know, we'll uh, let you go and enjoy your Saturday. And like I said, it's uh, Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Invite somebody. Uh, some already have talked to me that God has set up some things and people have been over your house and you've been ministering and witnessing and having fellowship. And I'm just glad that God has 
doing those kind of things. We mentioned it Sunday that it would happen, and it is happening. And so we will just, as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, surf with the Lord in the wave of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, any prayer requests tonight, everybody? Any unspoken, anything? Great. Awesome. Glad that everybody's healthy, and uh, we'll let uh, them do their singing. Uh, Brother Malloy is going to have an announcement. We'll do it afterwards, after the Bible study, and uh, let's just worship the Lord tonight. Thank you. Oh 
we bless your holy name, mighty power. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Praise you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I um, found a verse that I wanted to share uh, tonight before the Bible study. If you've got a, a Bible, uh, you could read along with me. Uh, it's at the end of the thing, so you don't have to put it up. Um, it, just, it just struck me tonight uh, that it so succinctly said uh, what, what we should feel. It's Romans 6, 17. I'll let you get that. Romans 6, 17. And if you want, you can change the ye or you or ye to we and change the you to, to us to make it personal. Paul is, uh, is writing this the book and I was looking for some other scripture in here and uh, I came across this, but it just struck me. It says, but God be thanked that we were the servants of sin but we have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you, or us. Sorry. And it's, there's a, there's a lot to be thankful there for, is that, that we have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine that was delivered to us. That is like standing on the rock. We're standing on something solid. The doctrine that was delivered to us we have obeyed, and that, that is true for all of us here. Amen. So, um, there's a whole Bible study uh, based on how doctrine saves us. That sounds weird, but uh, that doctrine saves us. And it's a two-part Bible study. If you're interested, I have a copy of it. But you go and you teach them how important doctrine is to save us. In the second lesson, you teach them what that doctrine is. All right, so um, beginning of the new year, uh, Brother Lopez and I thought it would be good to go through our basic doctrines again. We haven't done that. Uh, we did it here and there during the last year, but we got off onto uh, books of the Bible that we went through for many weeks, and we went through um, women of the Bible. If you remember that? We, we hit, touched on that. So um, we're just going to make sure that we hit that for all of us again, uh, just to reinforce what we what we know and what we follow. I hate to say it's what we believe, because that means like you could believe other things. It's not, not okay. It's, it's what's true. So, uh, Bible doctrines. And I'm gonna start at a, the 20,000 foot level and only get a little bit ways into this. But um, not only Bible doctrines, but religious, whatever religion, has to deal with these subjects. Has to deal with God. What is God? Who is God? Is there a God? What's he like? Where is he? What? Uh, and in particular in the Bible, he created the world, so he's our creator, and he gave the law of the world. So that's one major part of, of uh, doctrine. Another one is uh, man's part in that. And of course, uh, many world religions have different origins of man and so on. But man, the sin, and the consequences of man's sin. That's kind of religion in a nutshell, is how do we cover ourselves up for what we know we did wrong? I mean, first Adam and Eve used the leaves, and uh, they used different ways to cover their sins. Uh, and it's funny that, well, I don't sound funny, but in all religions, th that is a major point, is how do I make up for what I've done wrong, and, and how do I please the gods? And, I don't come, you know, I'm not good enough, but how do I do something to please the gods? And, uh, if you, you know, if you, if you were to study many religions, you'll find that theme. Third thing is uh, salvation. So that's religion's answer to that question of how do I get, a, get around this problem that I'm not God and uh, I, I don't come up to the measure of God. How do, I, uh, how do I get out of those consequences? Is it, can I pay to get out of it? Can I do something to get out of it? Uh, those kinds of questions. After that is uh, living after salvation. Okay, so we, we, we find our, our religion that's going to save us from the wrath of the gods, whatever they are. Um, 
but then we, we have to live that way the rest of our mortal life. And that's kind of like living in your religion. It's, it's the, the way people live. They uh, have a group, they agree to a certain uh, set of ways to approach God, and they, they live that way the rest of their lives as they try to. And then lastly is, is life after death. What do different people think about life after death? And so we'll take a look at some religions of the world and see what they say. Now, I have done some religions where I've delved into it and looked for the devil trying to copy Christianity and uh, what people think. That, yeah, uh, I'm not going to do that tonight, but I am going to list them. So we'll go to these other religions. Uh, Judaism, okay, and I'll just say a couple things about it. Uh, goes back to Abraham. God called out a people through Abraham. He had a son, and the promise went to Isaac thousand years ago before Christ. Uh, there's a few branches today, maybe a number of branches, but Orthodox, Reformed, Secular. The, the country of Israel is kind of a secular, religious, Jewish state. Um, Orthodox people trying so hard to follow every uh, <coughs> dot and tittle of the, of the word and, and uh, the laws of God. And the Reformed who found a way. So there's, there's groups within Judaism, but Judaism is a huge uh, religion that's spread. We can talk and talk about Judaism, how they how they stay a, 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 a religious group in a nation down through thousands of years being persecuted and so on, but they did. Islam, again, back to Abraham, only this time through Ishmael is the way they chose to go, and he didn't have the promise, but they said he should have or had. Uh, about 600 AD, so about 600 years after Christ, uh, Muhammad took advantage of the fact that the Jews weren't making it, trying to live against the law, the Christians were falling in the area, and the uh, other people that weren't religious, it was a, it was a mess, and, and he put it together, this is what I've read, he put it together, I've got a word from God that supersedes him, and it's going to fix all of that. And uh, there's three main branches, the Shiites, the Sunnis, and the Kurds, and that all depends upon um, ancestry and, and who who's, should be the leader of the, the group. Uh, next one, Christianity, again, goes back to Abraham, uh, to Isaac, but it goes down to Jesus, and uh, started, let's say Christianity started in 0 AD. And it has many branches that we know. And we'll, we'll delve down into that in the next slide. Um, then there's the Hindus, mostly in India, and Buddhism, which is, I think, an offshoot of Hindu, where Buddha uh, found enlightenment and people began to follow him, Buddhist. Um, again, in, in, in areas in India, but also surrounding India, many of the countries, Buddhism reaches into the Orient. Um, those are called the big five religions. So uh, it's not an unnumbered number of religions, but those are the big five. And Confucianists, I put that on there just because there's so many Chinese. So Confucianism, following Confucius, um, a large group there. And then two more, ancestry worship. Uh, this is like the Native Americans and uh, uh, people in Japan and South America. Um, they worship, they speak to, they ask help from their ancestors. Uh, I don't know if they believe that their ancestors come alive or if they become their ancestors or, or what that is, but they definitely are dealing with the dead and, uh, you know, worshiping and, and serving the, the dead ancestors. And then pantheist is uh, many god people, people that, uh, like in Egypt, remember Egypt had the ten gods that God overruled and the, they had hundreds of gods. So they made a god of everything, the wind and the sun and the water and so on. Um, that you find in Africa, Australia, Southeast Asia, uh, people that believe that way. Uh, then there's, I just threw out a few more ideas. There's people who don't care. Uh, the easy way to say is that I'm agnostic. I don't know either way and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, atheists, that's a belief that there is no God. Uh, Satan worship, which is kind of a weird Wiccan, voodoo, the devil, uh, evil, things of evil, people that, that get into that. Uh, there's people that worship man, worship the planet, 
Like man is the and the plant, well, the, nature is the highest form, and man is maybe somewhat dirty the earth and polluted the earth. Um, they worship the creation rather than the creator, which is like from our, our Bible. Worship the creation rather than the creator. And then there's people that worship themselves. So religion around the world, we could understand that people break up into these groups. Now the Christian types, um, Catholic, the Roman Catholics, around 300 AD, uh, Christianity was persecuted and the government of Rome said, let's, let's meld them together, let's agree on them, let's let them be uh, Christians in our country. I won't get into too much of that, but a uh, mixture of Christianity and government, and uh, they call themselves the Catholic Church, meaning the general church, the general church. Uh, 1.345 billion, so they're looked up, people identify that way. And of course, within that is anybody who's so devout, and people who are not devout at all, but they were baptized as a baby, as a Christian, and say, I'm a Catholic. So that's, you can get a lot of people that way. Uh, Jehovah Witnesses, not in any order here. Jehovah Witnesses, uh, 8.7 million. Mormons, 17 million. Adventists, 22 million. That's the Seventh-day Adventists, the people that really focus on Saturdays, the Sabbath, and the day still. Uh, and I don't know, what, I haven't studied their religion, what else they believe. Uh, Scientology, a really strange one. L. Ron Hubbard started that. Now, when I was back in college, uh, he had a group near my campus and he was trying to get, well, he, his group was trying to get people to come, and I went to one of their meetings and listened to it. Dianetics was the book, and they were just doing their, their thing. I have no idea what they believe. Uh, Hollywood people believe in, in Scientology, some. Unitarian Universalism, uh, 0.6 million. I put that down because a lot of times in the center of uh, cities, there will be a Unitarian church. You may see it and wonder, what is that? There's a whole study here, a study of man's religions that, that, that is interesting. I would say these last six here, uh, Jesus is not supreme. He's relegated, he's uh, part, he's, uh, they use what they can from what he said, uh, but not, not, a, not, a, not supreme. The, the way we look at Jesus, it's so far from it, we would have a hard time. We would have a hard time with that. Then comes uh, Anabaptist, I'll now skip, skip that line because I put it in later. Uh, evangelical, 500 million, and that's part of the Protestants, 1 billion. Um, Protestants being people that protested against the Roman church. The Roman church did a lot of bad things, a lot of good things, they did things. And people protested and uh, the whole uh, Reformation, the people got to speak their mind and, and change religion and protested. Um, you've seen these churches. Have you ever wondered where, what they what they all, how do they believe? I, I want to someday go to each one of these churches and ask them their doctrine and see if it isn't all the same. And they just do it different, have a different organization. Methodist, Lutheran, Episcopal, Congregational, Church of Christ, Presbyterian. I don't know what they, they all do. I, I know that they're all Trinity. They're all, um, they're all pretty much the same. So, interesting to find out all of those different things. Um, there's Orthodox, that would be the Eastern Catholic. So they had a different Pope, Constantinople, and so it's the Eastern where uh, Turkey is and so on. And then there's the Anglican, and I put them as the English Catholics. So the king couldn't get married, so he started his own religion. He, he yeah. divided himself from the Pope, and that's papal, the papal and um, became the Anglican Church, but they have priests and they have the same kind of services as the Catholics. Um, just the, the Catholic Church had uh, the philosophy of Trinity. They also had the papal teachings overrode the apostolic teachings. They did the things that we teach that we don't do, right? At the beginning of a Bible study, we say, we don't add, we don't change, and we don't subtract from the Word of God. Uh, they have, and the papal is, sort of a, the, the bishop on earth, Peter, uh, became the, the Pope and so on. Uh, a real man-made organization. Their money, they have a country of their own and so on. So I'm gonna get down to the last three here. Pentecostal Charismatic, 
this confuses a lot of people because uh, we call ourselves Pentecostal, but there's a million, hundred million more Pentecostals that aren't like we see the Bible teaching. Assemblies of God, Foursquare, Vineyard are ones out here and uh, you hear about uh, different, there are different churches that, that are coming along. They, they saw the Pentecostal experience and, and uh, went, went with it and so on, but their teachings are still stuck with the Catholic Church, which all these churches came out of. Uh, then there's the Anabaptists that I was going to mention there. Um, and the holiness, I put them together, I have no idea if they are together. There's, there's probably mistakes on here, so it's it's just an overview. Uh, Mennonites, the Amish, mm -hmm. holiness people, uh, if you've seen holiness or know any holiness people, Quakers, Shakers, these these groups here, uh, pretty pretty strong in their mortal religion, their, their body and their, 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 their living after salvation, if they had salvation how they're living it. And then uh, lastly, Apostolic Oneness Pentecostals. Um, I got a number of six million. I imagine that's bigger if you include all the groups, but because the groups aren't all under one major church, uh, it's it's hard to, hard to count them. Um, now, uh, none of this is to put down anybody, anybody's religion, anybody's belief. Of course, we build up, we don't tear down. So if you go to try to tear down somebody's religion and prove they're wrong, you're just gonna have a fight. So we try to add more truth to what, what they know or what they believe. So if they believe about sin and they gotta take care of it, great, we agree. Then we'll talk about how to, how to take care of it and so on. So next, uh, how mainline Christianity differs from Bible Christianity? And that's kind of the, the way I'm gonna go into our, uh, our study of the basic doctrines here. Um, the main three things, I put them in our language, who is God, how are we saved, and what's life after, after we're saved. Uh, it doesn't matter what we believe about after our death, it's, it's, it's already fixed, so we can believe about that, but we won't, we won't experience it until then. So these are the things that are so important to us. Who is God, how are we saved, how do we take care of that problem, and then how do we live after we've found that. So just starting, uh, I'll just start with the God of the Bible. Um, he is one God, and in this case here, I'm going to get four verses out of probably 400 that I would like to. Um, we'll start with God in the law, giving in the law. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The saying that the Jewish people say, because they are one God people. Uh, and so that's, that's in the law. The next one I give you is, is by the prophets, that God sent his prophets to the people to straighten out Israel and keep them going. Um, Isaiah 44, 6, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, besides me there is no God. So that means besides him, that means he must be alone, he's one. Then Jesus himself said in Mark, uh, and Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So right there, he wasn't separating himself as a second Lord or a second God mm -hmm. or another part of God or anything. He, he was in his flesh speaking with a human voice. He was saying, there's one God. And then in the New Testament, the apostles and, and James 2.19 uh, says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So the devils know more than we do. We're stuck in this time, we're stuck on this earth, we have a little bit of time, and they know there's one God. And so we're doing well if we know there's one God. And hopefully we aren't trembling. Hopefully we're worshiping. So, um, just like I said, this is the introduction. Just want to talk about Trinity versus oneness. Since Trinity came about by men agreeing to some kind of a form of doctrine, 300 AD. Lots of ideas were going around in 100, 200, 300 AD. Um, and the, when the government got involved and it's, it established this is, this is what it's going to be, um, and Trinity defines one God existing in three co-equal, co-eternal, co-substantial divine persons. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, God the Son is the only one that has a name there. I don't know why they didn't give names to the other ones. Uh, three distinct persons sharing one, I never saw that word before, essence. Each is God complete and whole. That doesn't make sense. They just contradicted themselves. Um, but I wanted to put in that I couldn't find the term Trinity in the Bible. I couldn't find the term God the Son. I couldn't find God the Holy Spirit. I couldn't find co-equal. I couldn't find persons. None of that could I find in our in our Bible. Um, when we talk about oneness, we're gonna we could just say that reading verse after verse after verse and put none of our words in it. We could. Uh, maybe we'll do that sometime. Um, but the oneness is that there's one God. And we've already shown that four scriptures from four different times, four different uh, groups of people. A singular divine spirit with no distinction of persons who manifests himself in many ways. I love that, in many ways, not three ways. If they want to put three on us and say, we're well, really Trinitarian because you say God manifests in three ways. Many ways, including as a father, as son, as Holy Spirit. And then it says this stands in sharp contrast to the doctrine of three distinct and eternal persons posited by Trinitarian theology. Look at that, positive. That means put forth, hey, think about being Trinity. They're not backing it up by anything. They're positing it something. They're showing that. And theology. In other words, their, their ethology of theo, God. Their, their science of God. Um, so... What we say there is that there's one God and he's a divine spirit. God is a spirit, John 4, 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God does not have a body. He doesn't have flesh and bones. God is a spirit and we've got to worship him that way. Um, and then we get into uh, that God is our savior, but Jesus is our savior. And I, I did a little search, I put in the word Savior, which gave me a lot of verses, and one page of those verses had this, had this set, and I thought I'd just bring it to you as it was found in my search engine. Titus, Paul writing to Titus, Titus being the next generation of preacher, and he said in uh, verse 3, But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Very next verse. To Titus, my own son after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Okay, he just contradicted himself. He said, God our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. 210, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Back to God our Savior. 213, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That is 3, 4. But after that, the kindness and love of our sa God, our Savior, toward man appeared. And then, that is 3, 6. Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. I'm showing you that, and maybe he was actually trying to pound that into Titus, I don't know. God, our Savior, and God says there's no Savior but me in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Back and forth, back and forth. God becoming our Savior. That would mean that if, if there were two people, then which one is the Savior? Right. And, and this doesn't make sense. Um, and then Isaiah, I go back to Isaiah. God speaking in, in through the prophet. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord. Beside me there is no Savior. Okay? Very, very clear. Jesus Christ is God, is our Savior. But Jesus Christ had a body. And that gets into uh, this subject of the, the law of sin and death. So back in Genesis with Adam and Eve, um, God said, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So it was a punishment for disobeying God. Now, I, uh, I'll just think out loud for all brothers and sisters here. I was always taught that, that they disobeyed God by eating the fruit. And that was the sin. But he said, 
thou, is, thou shalt surely die, and they died later. And they got to know the knowledge of good and evil. And the law hadn't been given yet. So was God forecasting, saying, okay, now you've opened your eyes, now you're subject to law of good and evil, and that there will be a, a punishment for that, even though the law hadn't been given yet. Not so simple as just, oh, you, you ate that fruit, and now you broke the law, and that's it. We can kind of sometimes look at it that way, but I think there might be more in that, that uh, they, man now became knowledgeable of good and evil. Now we got to give them the law. We got to give them what is good and what is evil because uh, they're sensitive to it. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 56, the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the, is the law. So the law codifies what sin is and sins, um, the, the uh, Word. Consequence of sin is death. So that's the problem that we have to have to solve. Um, do we all have to solve that problem? Well, Romans three twenty three says, "For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God." As it is written, "There is none righteous, no, not one." So yes, we all are in this predicament of the the law of sin and death. That we have sinned, and there is a death appointed to us. So. You can't die for your sins and live to tell about it, as I heard someone say. How do you, how do you tell about it after you pay the consequence of, uh, of your sins? So God needed a, a, a sinless human, I didn't put sinless on there, needed a sinless human with body and blood to take the punishment for the sins that we have. In other words, if, if you have a debt and somebody comes along and pays the debt for you, you're out of debt. We have this, this consequence of sin. If somebody will take the death for us, then we can avoid the death. So, uh, so he begot a body. Remember, God, this spirit, begot a body. He made it a woman. He didn't just appear it. He didn't take dust from the earth and make a new Adam. But he made it from a woman, not from a man, but just from a woman. And uh, his great salvation plan was, was started. And Matthew 123 says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God with us. God our Savior. Jesus Christ our Savior, God our Savior with us. God was the Word, and the Word became flesh. That's from the first chapter of John. God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto God the Father under the other person of the Trinity. It says, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He has reconciled the world to himself. So many uh, Trinitarian preachers say that Jesus was in between us and God, and but he was doing it to himself because Jesus was God, but he had a body now for this purpose. Ephesians 5, just another version, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. He's presenting the church to himself. I can, Brother uh, uh, Shane, you think about that throne in, Re in Revelations. And is Jesus sitting with the Father, the two of them in the throne? But then we're going to be in the throne. Uh, all of us are going to be in the throne. And that we kind of understand from this that God, our Savior, is in the throne. He was in the throne. He is going to be in the throne. Except uh, he is now has a, a body, Christ Jesus. Um, John, uh, Jesus straight out said, I and my Father are one. John 5.30 and they're not co-equal. That's just picking on one of the, the determines uh, the things that were in the definition of Trinity. Uh, because Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Okay, so if he has all power, then the other two persons of the Trinity don't have any power. They're not co-equal. Co <coughs> God is eternal. His plan is eternal. But Jesus was born at a specific time. 
The idea was from the beginning, but the man was formed in a specific time. God wasn't born, God doesn't die, but his human body was born and his human body died for us. And so I'm going to stop at that point and we will get more into uh, oneness uh, to clear up a lot of the different parts of it. Uh, I've touched on it during different lessons. I'll try and put it all together next time. But we see that God needed a body and he made a body. He didn't make another God. There's no God beside him, another form before him or after him, and that he is one, one God. So we can see now that through time, more, more knowledge has come to more people, and it, it's, it's a great thing. Uh, there's, a, there's a picture of the, the amount of knowledge added to the Protestants and then to the Baptists and then to the holiness people, and then more truth was given to the Charismatics and finally, in the beginning of this century, beginning of 1900s, uh, middle of 1900s, more and more people just wanted the truth from God and, and went to the Bible and, and found these things out, this, that, that there is an eternity. It's so hard when everybody around you and every church on every block is teaching this to even think outside the box. But if we keep our head in the Bible, God will... will will teach it to us and he'll show it to us each.